Hello everybody. Welcome back to another video. This is of Jack's train talk. Definitely something that I've wanted to do for a while. This is another video describing the history of the Wiscasset Waterville and Farmington railway engines number 9 and 10. These two engines are very, very interesting in their own rights, and I definitely suggest hearing about them and their history. Note that a lot of info were from the Wiscasset, Waterville, and Farmington Railway's website. Number 10 was built by Vulcan Ironworks in 1902. She was classified as an 044 Forney, which means basically they are a type of locomotive that um, is used a lot. She was used from the plantation in Louisiana, then moved to the um, railway that was called the Edaville Railway. It was new at the time, and thus, since it was new, they needed to use it. Many engines on this railway are Monson number no. 3, number no. 4, then Bridgeton and Soccer River number no. 7 and number no. 8, and there's just a whole array of engines. But 10 could not run on the railway. And as you can see in these photos, it was renumbered to 5 and had a lot of fake accessories on it. So 10 was brought from that railway all the way over to the newly made Pleasure Island Railway. And as you can probably understand, number 10 being a part of Pleasure Island wasn't always my favorite thing. But I can definitely say that 10 going to Pleasure Island was a good decision as she could not handle the grades like the other engines could on the Edaville. But number three was also sent to Pleasure Island for a good decade or so as well. But enough on that. Number 10 after being on display for a long time, would be sent in 1998 over to Wiscasset Waterville and Farmington Railway Museum, owned by Harry Percival. And also, here's my personal opinion, Harry Percival is an amazing guy. Number five, as it was named then, would be changed by being restored in 1998, hoping to restart the engine's career. And the engine arrived in 1999, more specifically August 6th, 1999. The engine was completed in time for the 1999 picnic, which happened a little bit later. It was quickly re-lettered and renumbered to number 10 in Wiscasset, Waterville, and Farmington, number 10. It also needed, since it needed a ticket, boiler ticket from the state, it could not operate at all. So they needed to wait a little bit for that. And then its first steam up took place on December 18th, 1999. And it also saw several weekends and times of service in 2000. Then it basically underwent a lot of boiler repairs in 2001 over the winter 
and it saw a lot of infrequent service from 2001 to 2002. Then it underwent an 18 month refurbishment in 2003 to 2004. And then after that, it basically operated for a long time up until 2015 when they had number nine. And then it was brought to their attention that 10 should be replaced and that it should be put under overhaul again. But since that time, 10 is almost done. It will be finished in sometime in the future. Hopefully in the next couple of years, because when I went down there, it seemed like the guys in the engine house were actually hopeful to get the engine back and operating again. Great job, guys. Great job. One more problem that they encountered during Ten's career was that number three, built by Vulcan Ironworks again, had stable problems, which then was found to be a design flaw in 3. But they wanted to check just in case. So 10 was taken out of service a little bit. And the stable problem thankfully was not found in 10. It was only in number 3. So I'm happy about that. All in all, I think 10 is an amazing locomotive, and I hope to see it in service sometime soon. Keep the good work up, guys. Our next locomotive will be Wiscasset, Waterville, and Farmington number 9. Alright, this is going to be an interesting one, because number 9 is an amazing engine, no doubt, because of this, number nine has been on a lot of railways, as most engines are. Nine was actually put into service first in, two th in 1891. For the Sandy River and Rangeley Lakes, and then was put into service on the Sandy River and Rangeley Lakes Railroad when it was consolidated in 1908 as their number six, and then was sold off to the Kennebec Central Railroad when they needed an engine as their number four, and then was turned into Wiscasset, Waterville, and Farming 10 number 9 when they needed an engine. Got all that? Okay, let's continue. <laughs> so, since number 9 actually was working a lot, she was bought by Frank Ramsdale of, of West Thompson, Connecticut for Hope's of him building a railroad, which never happened. But number nine almost got scrapped again when she um had politics affect her. Yeah, welcome to the political world, everybody. All right, after a flood that happened, they really were hesitant of letting number nine go through the problems that she did. And so Alice Ramsdale is like, you know what? No, we're not going to have number nine be ruined by your political stuff. So it took her $5,000 and a lot of work later, and she managed to get number nine to operate again, to keep the engine. I didn't mean to say operate again, because <laughs> it never happened in her lifetime, unfortunately. But, 
<sighs> Number nine would keep where she stood until 1995 when she was moved out of West Thompson, Connecticut over to the Wiscasset Waterville and Farmington Railway Museum where she underwent a lot of tests and managed to win a hydrostatic test under compressed air. And I believe not many people know this, but she ran under compressed air in 1996 to 1997. But later on in her life, they said, nope, she can't run because her boiler just couldn't meet up with the times. Again, I think the Gettysburg Railroad explosion caused this. So, number nine went through a lot of work, had a restoration and overhaul, which went from 2000 to 2015 when she ran again. I have seen her run and she is a beautiful engine. Then, another big milestone that happened was when she ran over the Trout Brook Bridge for the first time in almost 90 years. The mountain extension is also coming out soon, so it will be ready for the public any time in 2022. That's as far as I know because I've looked in their pamphlet that they sent out in 2021, and that's what it said. So, what do I think of this engine? Should I also mention that it's also one of the one of two engines built by Portland Company back in 1891 and people who have read the main two-footer books that we have would say there was so a lot of engines that were built for the railways here's my answer scrap 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 crash 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 scrap 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 crash crash crash, crash. Yeah, a lot of crashing and a lot of scrapping. Yeah. And that's just sad. Well, at least one of them made it out. Number nine is an amazing engine, and I hope that she will never stop running. This has been Jack's Train Talk. Everyone out there, have a very good day.